good to be here tonight. Uh, I will talk about a lot, lots of our social projects. I brought a, I brought a whole range of things that um, that we do, and, and they're mainly my projects. When I say my projects, obviously I don't. You know, we we work in architecture. It's a collaborative practice, so I only direct the projects and you know have a strong influence in you know which way they're going but there's a nice team of people who you know actually work on the on them and um, make them the success that I you know that I hope they are for for people who live and work in them so that's what we look like it's a nice little warehouse in the city off Little Lonsdale Street um, and there's about 40 of us and we've got a fairly flat structure, six directors, we just, um, uh, we just, which are all kind of like um, from my age to, you know, about 30 odd years old. So there's a bit of a spread. Um, we've got uh, associate directors who hopefully will take over the place from when old people like Rob and I and Chris move, move out. And, uh, and then there's um, associates and, and uh, other colleagues who, um, and all together there's about 40. So it's a kind of medium-sized practice and um, we work on projects that are still quite uh, small. We're doing a little school at the moment which is only three and a, three and a half million dollars and but we have also do larger projects which I'll take you to in a minute. For example this one which is about 40 million. So um, this is our latest one. And it's a, uh, if anyone knows of the name of Osnham House, it's a, uh, it's a uh, institution that's run by Vincent Care, who, and Osnham House traditionally has offered services to people who are homeless, um, have health, mental health and um, drug addiction, addiction, issues and a range of other um, difficulties and they came to us with um, a site which is opposite the, the Royal Children Hospital so this is this this view here is Flemington, Flemington Road and um, they wanted to extend their services to uh, a, a range of residential on-site residential services in order for so that they, their client could um, progress from something that's quite uh, temporary because um, a lot of a lot of their clients uh, either live on the street or have just been released from jail or you know various have various sort of difficult life circumstances so they came to us um, uh, to develop this project, maintaining all of their services, which which are housed in this um, lower section of the of the of the building, and and then um, this is sort of the shop front kind of thing with the main entrance and whatnot, <coughs> the clinic, all those sorts of things. Um, and then above, above that, there's a sort of, and this is an internal courtyard, and you can see on the right, there's a residential component which has short-term, medium-term, and longer-term housing, with the idea that people progress as they, as they get getting their life together, progress from short-term to, to you know, the longer-term um, accommodation. So this is a project that's going out to tender now, and we're looking forward to getting this built in the next year or so. Um, another project that could fit into that sort of 
community uh, social kind of benefit of the community is is the Bendigo Library. Um, the building at Bendigo was um, was this is the before shots uh, was a um, probably uh, like a 1980s building. It was quite solid um, in a fantastic part of town, right in the middle of the the middle of that sort of um, historic part of uh, town, not very far from Hargrove Street, which is the mall for anyone for anyone who knows Bendigo well. And but it was obviously quite a tired building, you know, internally it was it lost its kind of um, charm, I suppose, if it ever had any. But um, but it was a very solid uh, structure. So we we kind of you know, and I've I've kind of grouped these slides in under various kind of subheadings, and and I'm talking about here making a difference. Because I assume all of you want to be architects because, not just because you're in love with um, design, but also because you want to, you know, serve the community that you'll be working with. So what, um, what we did was use the structure of the building. And you can see here the big concrete frame uh, columns and uh, frame that was uh, we exposed. And we extended the, the interior towards the park, uh, created, um, so you can see here, all of this area here is the, is the extension. We've, we've got a new uh, children's area, which also serves as a bit of an amphitheater for, um, uh, for talks and whatnot. Um, further along, there's a, uh, in, this, in, this space, in this new space, um, is the browsing area so people um, kind of that come in um, are able to just meet friends and whatnot and there's a cafe at the end of this space as well but the bigger the biggest move we, we made here was um, to actually uh, this is probably to actually create this street so one of the interest one of the interests that we have in the office is how to uh, bring the urban environment into a building and vice versa. One of the ways that we did it in this project um, was to create, carve a um, an internal street, a kind of a, kind of what you might have in Melbourne, you know, as a traditional arcade kind of idea. Um, originally, with the thought that this part of the the library, which is the existing part of the library would be even shut down after hours, but that this could continue, you know, could, could work 24 hours a day <coughs> together with this kind of more casual environment here where people could just browse books and um, lounge around on the, on, the, on the couches and the chairs and meet friends and whatnot. As it turned out, the library decided not to segregate this part of the building from the rest of it and just use it as, as, as one, one space. So, um, so that's that's kind of how it ended up. Um, we also created some other spaces that we could use for um, that the, 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 that the that the client that our client could use the study spaces and and whatnot. It gets very well used by the community. As you, um, if you go up there, you'll be able to see that it's connected. As you know, we provided this new connection to the to the park um, and the town hall which sits opposite this opposite this building and you can see here again you know the new the new addition we made and the existing the pre-existing 1980s building so this this is a new entrance um, that um, cuts through the building um, the relationship of that to the to the town hall is an important one. Um, um, it's an, it, it made us actually reflect how much um, you can do this sort of thing these days because when we first started architecture, um, if you had a, a, um, a building of significant historic, um, a significant historic building like the town hall, we probably only would have been able to do um, reproduction Victorian. 
So you guys are lucky. You don't have to deal with that. Um, <coughs> another thing I suppose that we're passionate about is telling stories. And so I've put a few um, projects in the next few slides that um, sort of show how we, we tell a story. Um, and I'm really interested in typology um, because it's a vehicle, you know, a type typology, I'm sure you, you, um, you guys study about that, about it in, um, in your courses, is, is kind of a shorthand language that architects use to denote, you know, uh, a building, you know, a house or an institutional building of some sort, a church or whatever. And we use this um, idea of typology to um, pretty much the way that other architects have done it. So these are all building, I mean, I've just picked a few buildings that tell stories, like the Arab Centre in Paris, um, where uh, Jean Nouvel is, one, is the, kind of the first buildings that he became, like, the building that made him famous, basically, where he used a camera lens um, geometry um, to create a screen uh, which which then has that kind of Islamic um, uh, connotation across the across it creates this kind of Islamist pattern um, across the facade of the building. Um, other buildings that tell stories are, that are well known to you are, are these sorts of things. And I'm going to talk about Woodstock Street in, in relation to the stories that um, to typology really. Woodstock Street is a, a residential project, a housing project for a community um, provider called um, PPHA, Port Phillip Housing Association. And PPHA with the City of Port Phillip came to us because they had this, uh, the City of Port Phillip had done a, um, a survey of um, sites that they owned around the municipality and these sites um, kind of underutilised because they were just being, they were just at, at great car parks. They'd bought them with um, with uh, traders' uh, contribution um, but really they, they um, uh, weren't apart from being car parks um, and located in fabulous areas because typically they, as traders' contribution to, to uh, they, the sites were bought just around the corner from shopping strips and this is around the corner from Carlisle Street. Um, so they came to us with this site uh, and they said, well, we want you to keep all of the cars but then we want you to also give us a, um, uh, some apartments for, um, uh, for people in the, who are being displaced in the municipality because of gentrification. So this is the site now. Um, those, those photographs I show, that I showed you were just um, taken basically from, from the lane looking down towards the uh, towards um, uh, this corner and then they were taken off that wall that you can see here. There's a little bungalow there and there was a similar one on, on, on the actual site. Um, so the basically what we looked at was in terms of telling a story was the context we had um, these two story shop you know shop and warehouse type uh, buildings in the area and we also also had all of the, um, the small uh, single story cottages um, down um, that kind of represented the majority of building stock in in in, uh, in the surrounding neighborhood and what we wanted to do was just really um, Tell, tell people that this was a place where that 
was like a, a house for people. So um, at the same time as we um, you know, we, we accommodated something like 30-odd apartments in here, but we did it in such a way that um, responded both to the to to the uh, to the interface with the single story, and then to the other side, the interface with the um, two story uh, uh, brick uh, brick buildings of of the area, maintaining the car park that you can see down here. Um, with the sort of number of cars that we had originally on site. There's a little laundrette on the corner which um, uh, residents use, um, but it's meant to have that kind of shop front feel to the street. And then, you know, the residents that move in are usually people who have, as I said, have been, di you know, or are in danger of being displaced um, because. Um, They've been renting, uh, and 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 their places are being sold and and redeveloped. Um, the um, uh, internally, there's a um, connection between car park and entry foyer, and this pattern here was um, a local artist. Um, it was basically a local artist that that um, work with us on um, on uh, on this particular element of the building. A similar development in uh, also for uh, same kind, so you Port Phillip and um, and the um, Port Phillip Housing Association um, is this uh, is on a site uh, here, which is also a car park. You can see its original condition. Um, around the corner from Bay Street in Port Melbourne and Liardet Street. So again, a similar context with two-storey uh, uh, shop houses uh, uh, in, in uh, Bay Street and single-storey um, cottages in Liardet. Uh, we had 400 objections to this one. Um, so this is what we did. We just basically um, created a form that mediated between the, the smaller buildings and this, this building here which was on the corner, which was actually a theatre. Um, they've called it, since, since we finished it, the, the, the residents have called it the tree house because it kind of has this kind of... Um, um, cubby feel to it, I guess. Um, internally, there's communal spaces uh, and a variety of uh, areas where people can gather, both sort of in, in lounge spaces and or, or in, in places like this, which are more sort of individual, you know, like study desks type of thing, you know, space. Because both this, this project and the one that I've just shown you, Woodstock Street, um, are actually they they they're um, what they call rooming houses, which basically means that the tenant gets a um, a motel style um, apartment, thirty five square meters. So it's a um, a room that has enough space to have a desk and a and a couch and a bit of a living space, plus a kitchenette and a bathroom. And therefore, we, in both this project and the previous one, we uh, made sure that we had a number of lounge spaces so that people could meet their friends or family or anyone who came to visit them, you know, the social, uh, the, 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 the social worker that's in, you know, in charge of uh, uh, their file or whatever, they could, they could come and, and, and actually uh, meet with with people from from outside in these spaces, um, communal spaces, or their friends in the building. Um, and that the corridors were generous enough to have a bit of a 
space for social gathering if, you know, if they uh, met with people within the development itself. Um, the, the circumstances of the, you know, the actual um, context is so, uh, it's so urban that it meant we we needed to create all these screens to 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 um, to that to other residential uh, occupancies that were across the lane, and we 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 created them in a way that was kind of this kind of um, slightly more um, playful playful way. Uh, now this is a bit of a cheesy image, but I wanted to put this up because uh, it it's again about the image kind of tells the story uh, of what we're trying what we're trying to do here. Another social housing development list on this one is is one that actually won a, a, a national award, and it was for the um, uh, for DH, DHS uh, uh, when uh, federal money was available to. Uh, to build these things, and fortunately, federal money hasn't been available now since. So there's about been about a five-year drought in these kinds of things. But um, this is an Altona, and it was a it was a large site that had been used as a uh, had been used as a um, nursing home. But the nursing home had long since <coughs> shut down, and and basically. Uh, um, we needed to uh, provide something like 60 apartments in a suburb that only has single, single story villas. And the way we decided to do that was to kind of refer people back to those single story villas in the form of these little gable roofs. And at the same time, create the sense of a village in, the, in this U-shaped courtyard that is also the entrance to the to the development. So this is how it actually was when it when it when it was just finished. So you can see the landscape's a little bit um, uh, raw, um, but pretty much um, this front courtyard serves as as a community garden and gathering space, barbecue, whatever for the community, and also a place where, as you enter, everyone knows that you. You know <laughs> the comings and goings of the, of the, uh, of the commu You know of the community that uh, it, that lives here. Some of the exterior facades we treated in a much more uh, kind of uh, severe way um, because we wanted this contrast between the external, uh, more rational facade to the kind of mushy internal kind of village feel. And also these these uh, external balconies and and uh, facades face um, a kind of we carved them out of the facade because they they kind of want to be a little bit of a, a, a nest from which to sort of view the um, um, the surrounding uh, landscaped area. So there's quite nice trees around the the block. We kept the internal circulation and the internal um, the, the site had some um, on-site parking so there's no basement or no parking in most of the things that I've shown you so far um, this had already some some parking on site and we maintained that but we, we didn't provide any additional parking and then some of these these are some of the internal areas so we've created a bit of a, a bit of drama with two-story spaces in the foyer space in the foyer area, so that again people can view view people coming and going. Um, talk about talking about the iconic. Uh, from time to time, you might be lucky enough to receive a commission that requires a kind of an iconic um, response. I mean, we all know what these <coughs> buildings are about, but our sort of mantra is really that sort of aesthetic isn't, uh, you know, the iconic isn't, um, the object itself is of less interest to us than what goes on inside or what the object is for. Having said that, um, probably these are the two most 
sort of object like things that we've that we've ever done. And there were for pavilions along um, um, New Quay at Docklands when the extension to Dudley Street was first designed and where um, this de de developer called Mab um, built a whole lot of residential towers on the sort of south side really of the of the um, of the dock. Um, these restaurants work around the plaza, the kind of the kind of shelter that plaza from winds and and um, and um, uh, kind of fairly yeah fairly severe weather that comes from being in that particular location. Um, and they obviously, you know, offer good views to the water and to the city for the uh, restaurant goers, goers in there, in this, in this precinct. You can see the, the towers behind that were designed by um, uh, Fender Katsalidis and um, SJB. And uh, we worked with an artist on this project, um, Neil Taylor, who sculpture you might see, you might have come across at uh, Heidi Gallery. He's the one that's done the big sort of uh, steel spongy thing in the garden there. It looks amazing. Um, another uh, theme of ours is this idea that whatever you do, you just try not to make it worse <laughs> than it is. So we work a lot with... with uh, with existing buildings and uh, this is a little project we did in Glenroy where we had an, an, an existing uh, uh, hall from, as you can see from the brick, you know, the brick was quite beautiful. It was actually a kind of uh, clinker version of, uh, of uh, cream brick uh, and it, it was a little hall that the community used <clears throat> and the site had a some... It was actually all fenced by uh, cyclone wire fence, um, but it did have some community uses on sort of nearby. So basically, what we did was just unite the hall and just then built all around this car park. And the car park was meant to be a kind of market um, market venue for the weekend, um, and the hall was extended. Um, it it um, was given a, a separate address by uh, introducing a, a canopy. Um, then a, an education provider came on site and uh, they established, uh, a, you know, they gave us a brief for a, for a um, kind of an adult education centre and an after hours, um, uh, uh, you know, computer computer uh, training and all those kinds of um, uh, activities that the um, that councils normally manage um, together with that there was a a, um, a brief for a um, child care center so mothers who wanted to have their kid looked after they could while they were doing um, computer classes. Um, to the right there's a health centre, a brief for a health centre and a child and maternal um, uh, centre as well. So the way we we treated this was we used, we actually worked with an artist um, uh, on this as well uh, and he he, you know, we talked to him about the bricks that uh, we could um, we could reuse on some of the of the similar issue of some of the other uh, things that were on site, and so we um, we basically um, worked on these facades together to create something that was kind of contextualized through the use of materials, but also. Um, it, 
it, it extended the that kind of um, uh, that kind of use into a new uh, new buildings that could work well together with the old ones. Similarly, in this project, which is the drill hall in Victoria Street, we were given this site uh, by the City of Melbourne, who could see that there was a need for community housing within the city as, you know, because, I mean, again, uh, they didn't have any community housing within within the bounds of Melbourne, the Melbourne City Council. And so... Um, they started talking to uh, a community housing provider and the opportunity was there to um, preserve the drill hall which is, which is actually in this location and all of the offices, mess and um, various other historic uh, functions that the, the original drill hall uh, complex had but then add to it um, 50 or so apartments and in in this case the apartments are, are completely self-contained they're not they're not um, a rooming house they're a one one mostly one and two bedrooms um, uh, and the interesting idea here was that the apartments are used um, uh, 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 you are also uh, part of this kind of community where um, people with disability uh, who then need some health um, uh, health services uh, can access these in the refurbished drill hall complex which is now being run uh, as a health service. Um, internally, that's the, it's pretty much a restoration to the old um, to the old building, which was a significant Art Deco building in the city. Um, we, uh, these are the massive columns that hold up the residential tower. So all of this was gone and reconstructed. Uh, the old ceiling was reconstructed and, um, and replaced. And um, once, once the tower was built, in the, the, um, the typical floors are, um, you know, do have some great views of the city as well as um, this kind of, you know, the, the way we, we dealt with typical floors, floors was, again, this theme of house um, using sort of t um, stud frames and, um, and then modifying the stud frame to, you know, in this case you can see the number eight because it's the eighth floor. Um, so each... Uh, each floor is given its own number and um, helps people to orient themselves. This is one of the apartments um, as it was as it's been decorated, you know, lived in by the the tenants once they moved in. The last last project I'll show you is this thing, which we did for the the Venice Biennale, and um, it kind of uh, goes back to what well, I've. I've talk, I like to talk about this because um, in about in the in the 1980s when I was just a fairly young girl, I mean a young graduate, um, I managed to get into two Dharma Winter schools which were run by RMIT, and as part of it, um, some pretty interesting people came to these schools to 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 give the the seminars. Um, uh, one of them was Enzio Manzini, and, uh, who's an in Italian engineer, and he's kind of um, has this whole philosophy about we, as in we um, uh, humans, our nature, and so and and as you know, and so what we do, which is architecture and design, is also nature, uh, as as in nature plus construction plus architecture is this other nature that we have to look after. And his, um, there was a lot, lots of interesting um, ideas that came from those, you know, which could sort of you could do a separate lecture on. But this particular one kind of I found particular, you know, I found very inspiring and, and 
it's part of this idea that um, we are nature. We um, uh, submitted an entry to the Venice Biennale, which was called Saturation City, and it was very much a collaborative project with some other colleagues, which with, with colleagues inside the office and outside the office. And Saturation City is about this kind of apocalyptic scenario, which now seems to be passe because this, this is, you know, seven years old now, I suppose, um, uh, of a, you know, a flooded world. And we talked, we, we thought about it in terms of Melbourne. But in, um, and the flood obviously then produces conditions that make us um, want to think and imagine what, what our, how to live in, in, in a kind of extreme environment. So we, we imagine this kind of, you know, uh, islands of inhabitation. One was that sort of rock-like thing you just saw in the previous slide. This one was the, the, um, the gardens. Uh, I think we took several iconic, you know, bits of garden, the botanic gardens, the um, treasury gardens and a few, few, few spaces like that and kind of, you know, preserved them for all time by kind of building a sort of a reverse swimming pool around them and, and then creating a sort of a mini city. Um, we also took inspiration from Venice itself and, and, and uh, used uh, the idea of islands to, to sort of have kind of multi-storey skyscraper islands as another another typology for inhabitation in this uh, uh, water water you know this world is turned into a um, uh, into a flooded flooded uh, uh, flooded environment um, and finally I just want to just talk about the importance of role models in this whole, you know, thing of Korea, and again going back to the uh, to Dhamma School, uh, one of the people that came to teach us was uh, Anna Maria Castelli Ferreri, who is, um, well, you've all seen these um, plastic um, uh, containers. She's pretty well known in the design world. And for me, it was the only, it was the first time where I actually thought, okay, I know. I mean, now I feel like I can be an architect because it was the first time that had been presented with someone who was a woman, who was also a designer, and um, and I you know, hadn't had that role model. Um, I mean, I'd had mentors because I'd already worked in a couple of offices and um, had very, very um, uh, generous uh, employers and, and people who mentored me through my work, but I didn't have that visual picture of myself as, you know, being an architect or as being kind of, a legitimate part of the profession until I actually met her. So I just wanted to leave you with this slide to just say find yourself a mentor if you haven't already got one and um, and um, just, you know, get as much information out of them and, and talk to them about their career, plan your career with them. Um, ask them, you know, there are so many, you know, the career of an architect is such a long and, and difficult one that you kind of um, need people like these to kind of inspire you, I guess. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs>